If you're interested in learning how to paint water in watercolor, today's tutorial is packed with helpful topics. Using this sweet image of two little girls at the beach, I'll show you how I paint the water, the foamy rolling waves, figures in the sunlight, and the reflections on the sand. Let's get started! Before I start my painting, I'm grabbing my masking fluid and a rubber brush, and I'm going to use the masking fluid to paint in some small little dots where I see light being reflected on the water. Anytime you have a scene that's in the brilliant sunshine, you're going to have little glimmers of light catching on the water, and so that's what I'm just dotting in here with the rubber brush. I'm also going to protect the skin of the two little figures by masking in their figures and being careful to paint that masking fluid smoothly around the edges of their arms and their shoulders. This way their skin is protected when I go over the water with my blue paint and I can also paint freely around them. I'm grabbing my half inch Richeson Gray Matters water media brush and just mixing up a watery mix of ultramarine. In a separate area of my palette I'm mixing up some yellow ochre and adding in that ultramarine to create a greenish mixture. I usually start wet and wet, but today I'm actually starting wet on dry, taking that mixture of ultramarine and placing it directly on the dry paper. This way I can better control the shapes of my waves. I'm going in with that greenish mixture to start to add some of my waves, and then just alternating back and forth between a watered down ultramarine and my mixture of yellow ochre and ultramarine. You'll notice I'm allowing the brush to miss certain areas, leaving a little of the white of the paper showing through. This green I'm adding in is actually turquoise blue and that's adding a nice pop of bright color. I'm streaking in some more yellow ochre and then starting to paint the waves underneath. It's nice using a flat brush because you can almost chisel the waves out almost like a calligraphy pen. I'm intensifying some of the color still just sticking with ultramarine and yellow ochre for most of the color combinations in this water. You'll notice I'm not going super detailed here because the, the water in the background is going to be a little bit more out of focus and we want our focal point to be the two children. You don't have to go crazy detailed with this. Now this first area that's in the light, this wave that's rolling in, I'm using a little more yellow ochre and a greenish mixture, more of a combination of my ultramarine and yellow ochre to create a greenish look. And you can see that I'm still painting wet on dry right now. I'm using watered down ultramarine in between the two figures, just a flat wash. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then touching my yellow ochre to that, wet and wet, allowing the two colors to charge together and blend naturally on the page. Where there's that white surf coming in, I use wet and dry and just dab my brush in with yellow ochre and ultramarine. And I'm using a dry brush technique to create some texture on those waves. To get the same effect, of course, you'll want to use cold pressed paper or rough pressed paper, something that has a little bit of tooth and texture, otherwise you won't be able to get that same dry brush effect. Again with the waves, I'm using a dry brush technique here. I've switched to a smaller round brush and I'm just scumbling wet on dry, creating all of these rough little textures in that surf. My colors are still really simple. Here towards the bottom of the page, I'm introducing a little more intense ultramarine and a little bit of burnt umber actually where I see some of the reflections of the sand showing through in those waves. When you combine a brown and a blue it neutralizes the two colors producing almost a grayish tone and you can see that in these streaks of waves that I'm painting in now. Of course for the more specific wave shapes switch to a smaller round brush. You can still stick with your flat brush but I find the round brushes are a little easier to work with for these small details. For the water that's right up against the girls' bodies, I'm using burnt umber and again wet on dry, just scumbling my brush, creating this rough texture where I see the waves rolling in. I'm alternating my colors, just using a combination of ultramarine, yellow ochre, and a little bit of that burnt umber now. For the streaks in between the two girls, I'm sticking with my small brush and being a little more specific now with the shapes that I'm making. Since we're getting closer to the focal point of the painting here, you can use more detailed techniques and be a little more careful with your brush strokes to try to get them as accurate as possible. Constantly look at your reference photo and make sure that you're following the shapes closely, especially if there are shadows being cast by the figures. If you want it to look real, you need to make sure that your values are right in the water. 
before we go to the next part of the video, I just want to let you guys know that this tutorial is available in real time. Just head over to emilyolsonart.com where you can access all of my fully narrated real time tutorials for just a small amount per month. I also include a sketch and reference photo with those tutorials as well as a list of all the supplies I use so that you can follow the exact steps to paint along with me. With the Fearless Artist membership, you have access to my watercolor jumpstart video course which is the perfect place to start if you're brand new to watercolor. There's also a series of 20 minute tutorials that will help sharpen your skills and give you delightful frame worthy little wins in your watercolor journey. And join our private Facebook group where you can share all of your amazing artwork and get feedback from other artists. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can see all the tutorials that are currently available and I'm adding more every month. All right, let's get back to the video. I'm adding a little more detail within the surf just darkening up some of the shadows where maybe the surf is rolling over the top, creating a shadow across the water. And once that center section of water is done, I can remove the masking fluid from the figures. To mix up the color for the skin tone of the first little girl, I'm using Transparent Orange, Windsor & Newton, and Alizarin Crimson by Holbein, but very watered down. For the skin, I do start wet and wet. I wet the paper first and then drop in this very watered down mixture of color. I'm avoiding the areas that are directly in the sunlight as those will be the brightest. And now I can intensify some of the colors where there are shadows on the arms and legs. I'm using Burnt Sienna for this. Now why in the world am I putting down blue? Well, it creates a great shadow tone. When you start with Ultramarine and then drop Burnt Sienna in over the top, you get a really nice, beautiful, transparent mixture that's nice and dark in the shadow shapes for skin tones. Anytime you create something like a shoulder blade or an anatomical feature with smooth skin, make sure you soften all the edges. You can see I'm painting very delicately with the tip of my round brush. Not too much water, just enough so that the paint is flowing. For the spine, I'm just using the tip of my brush and a watered down combination of that burnt sienna and ultramarine. And it was already a little too dark, so I wiped it out to make it lighter. For the other side of the arm, again, I'm starting with ultramarine and dropping in burnt sienna wet and wet to create those deep dark shadows in the armpit and where the arm is turning underneath. I always have to soften my edges. Whenever you're painting skin, Make sure that you soften your edges by rinsing your brush, dabbing it dry, and then smoothing out that edge of paint. Her head is casting a shadow across her shoulder, so I paint that in using Burnt Umber. And then I can start to add the first layer for the hair. I'm just using Watered Down Burnt Sienna for that first layer, but carefully being sure that I avoid any areas that are bright and lit up in the sun. I'm using a combination of Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, and Burnt Umber for the hair. Her hair is really curly and blonde and a little bit complex because it's wet and some of those pigtails were starting to fall out. So I'm smoothing it out and idealizing it just slightly. Remember, when you're the artist, you can do this. You can take liberties like that, like making the hair a little bit smoother perhaps than in the reference photo. But try to get your values correct. Make sure that you're going dark enough in your shadows and leaving plenty of highlights if you want it to look like it's brilliantly lit in the sunlight. I remove the masking fluid on the other little girl. And since her skin tone is a little bit darker, I again start wet and wet, but I drop in just a slightly more intense value, still using that same combination of colors that I used with the first girl. She's a brunette, so I can paint her hair a bit darker. I do a whole wash of burnt sienna all over her hair, just leaving a couple little highlights. And then for her arms in the shadows, I again intensify the color using ultramarine and burnt sienna. With the hair, I use my Silver Black Velvet size 4 round brush, and you can see I painted with a lot of detail, but this hair ultimately was much easier than the blonde hair because it was really just burnt umber and a little bit of indigo to darken the shadows. For the foreground, I'm using my watered down ultramarine again, but you'll notice I'm avoiding the areas of the water where there are going to be reflections of the girls on the water and just allowing some white streaks to remain visible. We'll paint that in with color later. While it's still wet, I'm painting underneath that surf, that rolling wave, using my Burnt Sienna and Burnt Umber. Adding in some turquoise blue here and there, and my combination of Yellow Ochre and Ultramarine for a more greenish hue. 
Use your dry brush technique, that scumbling motion on the waves to create texture, to make it look like foamy water. Make sure that you're checking your reference photo to get the colors and values right. And where you see darker shadows, like underneath the little blonde girl's body, make sure that you go more dark and intense to mimic those shadow shapes. I'm using my small round brush here for these tiny details again. In front of the little girls, I'm using that same combination of alizarin crimson and transparent orange to mimic their color on the waves. To create that reflection, I'm just using a horizontal side to side brush stroke with that pinkish color and then filling in between with a darker blue, crisscrossing and intersecting those horizontal lines with each other to create almost these zigzagging puzzle pieces in the reflections. The reflection here does not have to be perfect. Remember the water is moving and shifting, but where you do see shadows on your little figures, imitate that color in the reflection. So here I'm adding burnt umber to suggest the shadows of the girls on the water. I'm doing the same thing with the other little girl using that same skin tone color for the reflections on the water and then adding streaks of burnt umber suggesting their shadows on the water. And then using a darker ultramarine on my brush I'm alternating that in between where I may have left some white streaks and adding darker streaks of burnt umber, suggesting her dark hair being reflected on the water. When you get to this stage where you're almost finished, just take another look at your reference photo, make sure your values are correct. Here I'm darkening up the water one more time next to their figures where I felt like it was still a little bit too light. And I think that helps a lot with getting the values correct. And then I removed the masking fluid and there is our final painting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching.